Journal Entry 156. We're on the move again. Our scouts in the field noticed an airship flitting about in big circles and figured that the crew lost control of it. A few hours later, it made about 20 passes over our main encampment. I'm pretty sure they're using the cargo airships as fast scouts now. The only question is, why didn't they start doing this sooner? Or why they didn't just fill it up with archers? We're packing up camp and moving to a more secure location and preparing for a surprise attack. If we don't see any sign of the enemy, we're going back to sack Wolftail Mills. Why is it called Wolftail Mills? No one knows. It dates back to the old original shifter colony, and they like to put Wolf in the title of all the settlements. Unfortunately, no one has bothered to change it. It's a good indicator as to how long an area has been settled or used. So this is the place where all the wheat from the outlaying farms is shipped to be processed along with other foods. There's even a massive brewery and winery. I'm starting to see that there's a big chain of production going on in the kingdom rather than having each farming settlement process their own goods. Is this more efficient or is this an effect of bureaucratic expanding to meet the needs of the expanding bureaucracy? Either way, taking it down should be a nasty blow to Wolf Lake supply system. Journal Entry 157 Sure enough, Wolf Lake sent out a huge army, at least as large as the force at Wolfgate Fort. So, the Battle of Wolftail Mills. We set up the catapults quickly in case they did another horde charge. But no, something else happened entirely. I knew something was up when they arrived. They had 30 or so of the big caravan carts with them. We initially thought that they were an, an unusually guarded supply train before they started getting information. Phalanx. The initial archer and magic volleys began, but their side never threw offensive spells, just the defensive ones. We launched our catapult bombs, all eight of them this time. The enemy ranks were thrown into chaos, and then we moved in. They put up a good fight this time. All of our waves were deployed. Just as it looked like another route, the carts started unloading. Skeletons. Zombies. Undead. The enemy spellcasters did their thing, and the slain enemy soldiers started getting back up as a fresh batch. It's the first time I've ever seen anything like this. I felt a chill go down my spine. I had heard stories, but here it is. Every nation and religion that we had come across had banned this type of thing. What the fuck was going on here? Neither my skills nor my pistol are any good against the undead. I had to rely on my weaker swordsmanship. The archers weren't much use either, except for picking off the living enemy, which just made more undead. We started losing ground quickly. The undead don't care. They keep fighting even if half their limbs are missing. Any casualties on our side rose in service of theirs, and they weren't letting us anywhere near the casters who rose in them. And then something happened with Avery. She had been sitting in the back with the rest of the non-combatants. She snapped, I think. She walked right into the middle of the battle and lit up like a fucking beacon. She picked up a mace and went to town. I didn't know she had it in her. With her help, we managed to form a wedge and push right through to the caster line. They pulled into a full retreat once we got near, taking whatever undead servants we didn't utterly destroy. We lost nearly half our forces in this fight. Journal Entry 158 Well, after all that excitement, we burned down Wolftail Mills and hauled ass out of there. Though we won, we suffered major losses in this fight, It'll be time and money before High Command can get our numbers back up. So what would drive a nation, well respected by other kingdoms, to break out the necromancers? Is the king that afraid of losing? Every church that doesn't break ties with them now will be turned upon by the people. This type of shit doesn't fly. The people of this world are highly superstitious, and marching around undead is one of their greatest taboos. High Command has deployed messengers to everywhere possible to spread the news. Avery's been in prayer since we set up our tent. Does her god answer her? I don't know how that works here. Journal Entry 159 Avery got her answer, apparently. 
She declared that she will now give her full support to the war effort by her God's permission. So, you know, so wait, the sun god is officially supporting both sides of the war now? Dealing with this shit gives me a headache. Our scouts in the field have been reporting roving bands of undead, usually groups of a hundred, give or take, in wolf-like armor, moving from location to location, most often at night. Maybe the king is some kind of lich. I didn't think much of it then, but he was hiding during the ball I attended, up under the Rhine grass, and his castle is impregnable and off limits to non-officials. Then why is the church supporting him? Especially the church with a hard on for smiting undead. And Terran scions. Also, I know you're reading my journal, Avery. Stop it. I'd like to see you try and stop me. I can see Avery standing there like Doc Holliday, you know, like I'm your Huckleberry. Journal entry 160. We got some more people in from the tribes. Fresh warriors and some goblins. They came in with a supply caravan along with a supply of some kind of wards the tribe shamans made up to help with the undead. I don't know how effective these would be, but there aren't enough. They're being given out to the frontline forces. Sure enough, markets vanished until they left and came back with a smile. So yeah, we're all pretty sure he's got a half-grain sweetheart. We're set to pack up and march in a day or two to a new position out in the hills, with the view of the main trade road. Supposedly, it's very defensible. From there, we'll wait a few weeks for more recruits, and then head out and see about ending this undead menace. Journal Entry 161 One of our far patrols came in today. They reported that there's been no Wolf Lake military activity in the field. What's worse is that there's a massive undead army guarding the main gate to the city itself, and it looks like parts of the city are on fire. Avery is particularly upset about the news of the city. She knows people there. Jason seems to think a zombie apocalypse has broken out. <laughs> Maybe it has. Maybe it's a rebellion. Maybe the Rhinegrafts are making their move. High Command has decided that we're going to start pushing forward, even with our decreased numbers. They want to know what's going on. We're going to make for Barrison Fort, a few miles from the capital and try and occupy it, and bring enough supplies for a siege. We start marching come sunrise, and should be there in a day and a half. Journal Entry 162 We took Fort Barrison without lifting a weapon. Only a small force was occupying it by the time we arrived, and they surrendered when they saw us coming. According to the fort commander, their numbers have been dwindling over the course of the month. A handful recalled here and there, and last week, it's been one or two soldiers at a time until all contact with the city was cut off for four days. He doesn't know what's going on with the undead other than orders to not attack them and treat them as any other Wolf Lake soldier. We can see the city from here. Large smoke clouds building from several spots hidden behind the massive walls. We have our cavalry archers out poking at the massed undead force at the gates. In the meantime, us Terrans have scoured the camp and have been making some more bombs. We have enough for three catapult bombs. Avery went and blessed the shrapnel we were putting in them. I don't know if that will actually work and neither does she, but it is worth a shot. Them some big ass fucking holy hand grenades are making. Journal Entry 163 Today we saw one of supply airships come in from the east and circle around for a while. We tried flagging them down, and managed to catch their attention. They didn't land, but hovered up near one of the higher towers in yelling distance. They are from Hebury, and were coming in on a scheduled supply run, but weren't going anywhere near the airship port with the way things look down there. Hebury's not involved in this war, and thought we are in the process of sacking the city. Apparently it's that bad inside. High Command paid them off to drop their cargo at one of the tribal camps since it's apparently stuff they can use. Clothing, spices, weapons, other manufactured goods. And they went for it. They're in it for the profit and don't care who gets it as long as they have their money. Journal Entry 164 Jason, while on night watch, caught something going on at the city gates. His replacement eye slash ruby gives him some kind of vision enchantment. The front gate opened a little and more undead streamed out. Then the gates closed. 
When sunrise came, it looked like most of the fires inside had been put out. I have this sense of foreboding. We're adapting a new weapon as well. We found two barrels of lamp oil in the fort storage. Mike is trying to thicken it up some. We're going to make some Molotovs using a few glass potion bottles. The plan is that we're going to arm the cavalry with them and have them firebomb the undead army guarding the gates and then get the hell out of there. We only had enough bottles to make about 14 of them. High Command is willing to give it a shot, but wants the rest of the oil set up to use as catapult ammo. Journal Entry 165 You know, I've been in this fucking country for far too long. If we never got caught up in this war, who knows where we'd be by now. So the cavalry rode out, got close enough to the toss their molotovs and made a quick getaway. A few came back with arrow injuries, but nothing serious. We watched the undead burn from the fort. They burned for hours. Dead skin burning away, just standing there, without a care in the world. The only time they moved was to keep the fire from spreading to the front gate. After a while, a good portion of the zombies collapsed. An hour later, got back up as black charred skeletons. Fantastic. To make matters worse, a fresh group exited from the city a few hours after that. Jason decided to volunteer along with some other similarly skilled individuals to climb the wall during nightfall and see what's going on over there. Journal Entry 166 Jason returned. He and his group saw no sign of patrols on the wall. They were out there until sunrise. He snapped some photos with his iPod, thankfully. Most of the city is decimated, especially the residential district. The market abandoned and filled with corpses. No sign of anyone living, just the occasional wandering undead. The Church of the Sun God is still standing, but all its iconography has been removed, and he said that there are lights coming from its windows. The Nobles District and Castle also seem to be completely untouched, and is the only places they saw anyone living moving around. They managed to catch a group of undead moving from the military barracks to their front gate on their way out. High Command has decided that the city is a loss, and we're going to pull back to the tribal lands until they can figure out just what to do. Journal Entry 167 We are on the move. Our wild elf mercenaries have been called back to their lands to warn and prepare. We should make the orc tribal lands in a few days, and, and then what? High Command seems to think the war for Wolf Lake is over, and the whole area is just cursed. I guess they did accomplish what we set out to do, to put an end to the pacification raids. But now there's undead building up. I think they're afraid, but I'm sure I'd get my jaw broken if I called them that to their face, though. Facing down undead seems to have hit some deep-seated fear. So the plan is to get back to the tribal lands and fortify and hope the undead stay away. Marcus has suggested that with the possibility of gunpowder becoming widespread, that they should build a star fort. He's currently designing up some blueprints. Journal Entry 168 I am so disappointed right now. We made it back to the tribal lands and set up camp. The next morning, all mercenaries were paid their dues and released from their obligations. The war is officially over, just like that, with the undead winning around the corner. They think fighting the undead is a futile task. I'm pissed, which is funny. We never wanted to get involved in a stupid war and here I am, disappointed that it's over without a proper conclusion. We gave them knowledge so that they could finish the fight and instead they back out because of superstition. Sure, I could manipulate some of them, but I can't manipulate all of them. So what now? We have our horses. I think we're just going to get our asses to Hebrew while we still can. Maybe follow the trade loop and see if our compatriots are still in Wild Lake. Ah, fuck. Journal Entry 169. Nice. We should be in Hebrew in a few days. Our time in the war taught us good places to set up camp and how to properly keep watch. We've run into several small undead patrols, usually three or four zombies or skeletons, which we have dispatched with Avery's help and cremated the remains to make sure they won't be getting back up. We'll be at the Wolf Lake border by tomorrow, and I can't say I'll miss this place. 
I wish the best for the orcs, but I do believe that their decision was wrong. The undead menace needs to be taken care of, eventually. Journal Entry 170 We passed into the nation of Hebrew last night. The road we're on is set in a tight valley. It used to be heavily traveled until the war broke out, and now the undead menace. We came across a border guard not long after crossing. We got stopped and asked questions, but they were polite. We updated them on what's been going on across the border, the undead and the war. They didn't say much, but they're worried. They will of course need to see for themselves, but at least they know what to expect if Wolflick decides to expand. We are camped at a cave on the side of the road that's been furnished for trade caravan use. The walls are covered in graffiti, writings of names, dates, and destinations. It looks like they date back hundreds of years. Not to feel left out, I added our information to the wall using Earth time. According to my calculations, we've been here either almost or little more than a year. I look back to my first few entries. I've come a long way. Journal Entry 171 I got to sleep in a real bed, eat a meal in a warm tavern. It's been so long. So, welcome to Hebrew, one of the main hub cities on the trade circuit. Brick and plaster construction with a large granite outer wall. The city is circular in design, set up like a hub similar to Aeon, but not nearly as large. Cobblestone streets that are well maintained and pride of the city. Apparently each stone has a name carved in it dating back to the first generations who built the city and settled here. The main export from the city is wines, cheeses, and tomatoes supplied from the many farms. So. First thing in the morning, Avery heads off to the local branch church to check in. She wanted an escort, but I'm not going anywhere near that place. It's clear that she doesn't know what to expect. Marcus went with her. He's the least likely of us to be branded evil and chained to something. Jason headed off to check in with his guild, which left Mike and myself. We hunted around the market for anything interesting. I got a new set of armor, some new clothes, and some supplies. Mike got a magic ring that he says has healing properties, clothes, and a bottomless bag which is some kind of knockoff bag of holding. Even with subtle manipulations, those magic junk merchants are a pain in the ass to get a good deal out of. Journal Entry 172 Well, Avery returned with news. The local Sun Worshipper church heads don't know anything about gunpowder or sanctioned deployment for Wolf Lake and are taking the news of what happened as an attack on their church. So they're doing whatever it is they do. We are going to stay around for a few days before heading out. It should be a two days ride the Rosen Bridge. It's been a while since we've been there. The place where it all started. So we have been puttering around town seeing the sights. The food here is excellent. So I was sitting in a cafe with the others discussing our plans when something caught my eye. Someone writing with what appeared to be a pen. It was larger than my ball points, but it was definitely a pen. Looks like my old officer friend finally managed to make it happen. I'll have to pay him a visit and see about collecting my share and see what else he's managed to make. Journal Entry 173 Went through the market again today. Some new caravans passed through yesterday and something caught my attention. A recurve bow. I didn't think they had those here. It didn't look new either. I questioned the seller. It's apparently from a kingdom far to the south and quite rare. The price tag on it was absurd. Avery picked up some things from her church's store. Jason picked up a set of new steel short swords and Marcus traded his beat up old dulcimer for a guitar. We're planning on heading out tomorrow and following one of the smaller trade caravans across the Rosenbridge. The area is well traveled, I'm not expecting any trouble. We watch Strange Days again. I wish I had more movies with me. We know every scene, every dialogue, all the music lyrics, but that's all we have. Journal Entry 174 So here we are, camped out for the night on the road with a trade caravan that we are following. Marcus is playing some music when all of a sudden, Jason starts acting funny. Suddenly this figure just appears out of thin air and before he can shove his knife through my throat, Mike tackles him. We dogpile that motherfucker and try to put on a beatdown. He slips free 
and gets ready to attack again when Jason manages to shove one of his swords through the guy's back. We bring our lights over and I recognize him. It's the fucking Rhinegraf Spymaster. The one I killed. He doesn't appear undead, so I shoot him point blank three times. Before I can fire a fourth, he's gone. Just poof. Not there anymore. Fuck. This isn't over. Journal Entry 175 Ah, wonderful Rosenbridge. It's been so long. It's different now, at least to me. I'm seeing it from a different perspective. As someone who is used to what this world has to offer, and not a lost and confused offworlder. We visited some of our old haunts. The alleyway, the haunted house, the docks where we worked for our first coppers. I checked around for the officer, but he's apparently in Wild Lake. Avery went in to check with the church and make her report, and Jason ran off as well. Mike, Marcus, and I did some checking around. Anything about us foreigners? Any news of the other three? Our leads led to the guard captain. We caught him off duty on the way to his residence. I dug deep. Rosenbridge is under control of a wealthy baron, but the orders to hunt us down was given by one of his advisors. We are going to pay him a visit tonight and see what he has to say. I made sure the guard captain didn't remember a thing, but I also left a little something behind the back of his mind. Doubt. Journal Entry 176 Avery and Marcus stayed at the inn during our escapade. Avery made us promise that we wouldn't kill anyone. The advisor lived in the wealthier part of town, near the Baron's estate. Jason got us into the building through a back door and we snuck around. I managed to get a few people to ignore certain sounds they heard and some memory auditing and then we were there, up in his room. We locked his door and got him up. It was time to explain. Time to find out what he had done with Max, Ian, and Austin. He awoke terrified, as would anyone who woke up surrounded by three armored people. Mike disabled his mouth. We didn't need it. It would only get in the way. He had heard that a bunch of homeless foreigners had shown up, and some of them had wondrous magical items with them. He had wanted to know more. He tortured them for information. For days. When he had decided that he had enough, he sold them off to the slave markets without a second thought and made a tidy profit. I promised I wouldn't kill him. Jason sure wanted to, or at least start cutting off things. I tried something new. I made him think he was in agony. Forever. Always. Maybe someone can fix what I've done, but until then... Anyways, we found some of their belongings in a chest nearby. An iPod mini, a droid cell phone, headphones, and a broken tablet that was so mangled we couldn't even tell the make in a first generation nook. Everything had a dead battery. Well, at least we can fix that. Journal Entry 177 We're on our way to Wild Lake. It should be only a day by horse. We had stopped briefly where Dan was killed and paid our specs. No grave, the body long gone, probably eaten by some animal. We didn't even know him that well, but he deserved better. So what do we do at Wild Lake? What don't we do? I wonder if Baldy Mick Tattoo Face is still around. Definitely have to pay a visit to the officer. The slave pits, of course, that's a given. I hope Alex is doing alright. The last time I saw him, we were just leaving Rosenbridge and heading here. Back when Dan and Amanda were still alive. Fuck. Journal Entry 178 Wild Lake. We are set up at the same inn we used last time we were here. There's no sun church for Avery to run off to. Jason's off visiting his old guildmaster. We poked around the slave market soon as we got into town, but our compatriots are not around. We will look into this more later. So, there was something I had to get out of the way. I left the others behind, left them with most of my gear, and headed out into town on my own. Sure enough, there she was, waiting for me. Almost on instinct, we both unleashed everything at each other almost immediately. It was like two fires engulfing each other. My head burned with power, and for a brief moment, we were of one mind before I repelled her will. I'm not as strong as her yet, but she can't completely dominate me anymore. With our greeting out of the way, she invited me in and we talked. The other one was there. 
I now know he's a telekinetic. The muscle of this organization. Either way, this conversation was not for him to hear. She made it clear that I need to be more careful about my moral abuses. If I draw too much attention, it will get much more difficult to do what we do. She was pleased with my wolf flick experiments, that I'm learning that you don't have to use brute force to get your way. She does still want me to shave my head. I'm not shaving my head. Journal Entry 179 So Avery is pissed at me. She thinks I snuck off and had creepy psychic sex with a rapist. How do I explain this to someone who can never see the world as you do? It's like Mike trying to explain how and where he draws his magics from. It's not going to make sense. You don't have the context to understand it. Besides, we didn't have sex. Not in the physical sense, anyways. She's driving me up the fucking wall. Anyways, I went in search of my artificer friend. He's dead. He's been dead since before winter murdered. A week later, the first ballpoint pins hit the market and are a huge success with the illiterate crowd. I checked his workshop and all our designs and his prototypes are missing. I'm pissed. Really fucking pissed. And Avery is pissed. And we're pissing off Marcus now too. It's a fucking chain reaction. I'm sure Mike and Jason will be involved as well, except those two ran off with a group of adventurers to hit the dungeon under the city. Journal Entry 180 So after we all cooled down, Marcus, Avery, and myself hit the slave market, did some talking, nudged a few people, paid off some others. It seems those three didn't spend much time here. They were healed up and bought up by a wizard who was most interested in the extra planar tag they put on the three. The wizard was said to have been heading for the city of Sibran. It's such a pain in the ass converting these city names into English, especially the ones without an obvious meaning or a weird pronunciation like Aeon or Kenild. Zibron. Well, whatever. The map says that's another town on the main trade circuit. We can get there from here or Hebrew, but there's a few cities along the way. Alright, we have a destination. We'll head out in a few days or whenever we're ready. In the meantime, I'm going to look into this murder of my cash cow. And that's the end of this episode. If you like this story and others like them, be sure to subscribe to Neckbeardia and click the bell icon so you know when the video is released through the week. Additionally, there's even more content on Nerdbeardia, another channel that we have where we post even more stories on. There's also the Discord and the Reddit page where y'all can just be little deviants to your heart's content. This has been Guardbro, and I will see you next time.